Excellent, yes. So, um, so as many of you know, there's a strong association of uh, several large uh, genomic copy number variants with neurodevelopmental phenotypes, including intellectual disabilities, which should be promising points of entry to understand the molecular etiology of these disorders. Uh, there's, however, also many challenges along the way, uh, such as such as large number of genes in the CNVs, a large degree of variance between patients, small cohorts, and inaccessible tissue. So we, we've established an IPSC model system for the 22Q11 deletion syndrome to attempt to tackle these challenges. <laughs> Going too fast, actually. <laughs> Uh, so, we're, we're carrying out now multi-level genomics and epigenomics analysis uh, in this model system, and we think this is also a good example for how we can create synergy between two areas of recent revolutionary technological and methodological progress, namely the new uh, genomics technologies and the new stem cell techniques that are now becoming widely available. 20Q11 deletion syndrome, uh, reasonably common, typically a heterozygous 3 million base pair deletion on 20Q11. Uh, many developmental uh, malformations and high rate of neurodevelopmental phenotypes, uh, and interestingly, a highly variable phenotype even in patients with uh, what is seemingly the same uh, type of copy number change. Here is the CMV region on 20Q11, 3 million base pair deletion, uh, up to 50 or even 60 genes affected by this deletion in, in the patients with the typical deletion. Many interesting uh, potential candidate genes in that region, and so it's not easy to sort out which gene does what. Um, <clears throat> this slide to illustrate uh, one, of, uh, one half of the equation of the revolutionary technologies, uh, the genomics technologies, just to show uh, more than 10 years ago, a single genome cost $3 billion. Now we can do the same uh, for $3,000 and in a week. And so similar technologies are being used uh, in our model system here. And the other half of the equation are the, uh, uh, the availability of induced pluripotent stem cell lines where you take donor tissue with a known genotype, turn it into stem cell-like cells, and then you can differentiate those into a neuronal, uh, neuronal tissue cultures with a known genotype and do, uh, do studies on those. Um, so <clears throat> here are the first 25 lines coming out of that effort. Uh, on top, the, uh, the 20 q 11 patient lines, uh, and also seven controls. We make multiple clonal lines per patient. Um, and this data was generated with the latest generation of high-resolution uh, high uh, SNP array with 4.5 million markers. You see, okay, then zooming in here, you see, you see now the patients, this is the 3 million base pair deletion regions, nicely delineated as expected and hoped for in those lines, um, the typical deletion in all these, in all these probands. <coughs> in the next slide, we have uh, the data for one of these lines showing, uh, showing the data genome-wide. So you see here along, uh, line, the data lined up uh, uh, in, the, in the order of the chromosomes in the numerical order. You see the signal again for the uh, 3 million base pair deletion on 20 to Q11. So this is, this is what we're looking for. This is what we like to see. Um, and it's important to do these, uh, these genomic uh, quality control uh, um, readings, if you will, because sometimes you see this. This is another patient line, IPS line, where you again you see the 20 to Q11 deletion but you also see an extra signal that's even stronger on chromosome 18, or broader at least. Um, and what that is, zooming in on that in the next slide, that's an additional uh, a copy number change, a large deletion, almost 30 million base pairs on chromosome 18 that has manifested, that has become unmasked, uh, has become manifested only in, this, uh, in this, uh, this particular IPS line. It was not present in the, uh, in the donor tissue, or at least it might have been there, but in a mosaic fashion, we're still testing that. And, so, and, and yet the cells differentiate reasonably well, so it's important to test this on the genomic level. Here's another example of this kind of phenomenon where this, this is uh, readings from three different IPS lines coming from the same donor, and only one of them shows an additional about 3 million base pair deletion on chromosome 2. Um, so so this, this happens, we know now this happens, this is not a, uh, uh, it was not a really big surprise to us because we had just published something similar like that. Um, in a different IPS-based model system where, where we could show that what was happening is that really you're unmasking, in many cases you're unmasking existing variation from the donor tissue um, into, your, into your IPS uh, clonal lines. However, once you know this and you can, oh, thanks. Once you know this, you can control for it and, and the numbers are manageable. And so, the, so the overall the model system is, not, is, is now there and it's, it's useful and uh, it's workable. Fibroblasts, IPS cells, neurons, and then we're doing all these uh, 
uh, these assays, mostly using sequence-based techniques to read out these multiple levels of genomic and epigenomic control across differentiation. This is one of the first data sets coming out of this. This is RNA-seq, gene expression analysis on a subset of the patient versus control lines. These are just the genes on chromosome 22 in their linear order. The deletion is here between the, between the red dashed lines. And as you can see, many of the genes, as expected, drop down to about 50%. Some drop down further, but also many stay up and one even overcompensates. So that's one thing we need to investigate, and we can now. And also, uh, well, here chromosome-wide, but also then genome-wide, we see additional changes, uh, which we think are network effects of the deletion, and there's both uh, changes that are consistent between patients and that are highly variable between patients. So, summary and outlook, we have, uh, we have started to create this model system. We have so far a panel of 25 IPS lines um, for 20Q11. For the most part, they are very usable, stable genomes, good differentiation. We're creating a larger panel. So there's no funding to generate an additional 40, uh, lines from additional 40 patients. It's a lot of work, five years uh, planned. And uh, in the meantime, multidimensional data sets are being generated, neurophysiology is underway, and we are first looking for common changes caused by the deletion in the smaller panel, and then once we have a larger panel, we'll also start dissecting the variance between patients. And the next slide I know will be my acknowledgments. Um, this effort was really started already, or had been started already when I came to Stanford by Joachim Halmer and Ricardo Dolmetsch, and so I could just join that, uh, which was nice. Uh, the, the, the data that I showed today, the, the genomics data was produced mostly by Carolyn Poorman in my lab and the stem cell work by Sergio Pashka, who was in the Dormage lab and has now just started his own lab in the department. And uh, that was fast. I thank you for your attention. Thank you.